For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. This is Strat News Global. I'm Amitabh Revi, and you're watching The Gist. I'm glad to be joined from India's capital, New Delhi, by Dr. Jagannath Panda. He's a research fellow and uh, the coordinator of the East Asia Center at the Manohar Parikar Institute of uh, Defense and Strategic Analysis. He's an author on uh, several books in China as well. Dr. Panda, appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Lev, Revi. It's a pleasure to be here. Amitabh, Dr. Panda. Uh, Dr. Panda, just uh, since your expertise is a lot in, and you've written of late also on, uh, you know, the whole historical perspective of how China has been dealing with Afghanistan, and especially with the Taliban. Many people don't know that uh, those links go back, predate 9-11 go back to uh, Mullah Omar and even before. But before I get into the historical uh, perspective, just wanted to get your take on, you know, various statements, because now Taliban are, are giving uh, a lot of interviews around the globe, and uh, they've called China, you know, their most uh, important partner. China has responded officially as well. What's your take on how the, the two sides, the Taliban and, the Ch and China, have been responding to each other? So let me begin by responding to your questions uh, in, in, a, in a context that uh, we know for a fact that every international development or crisis brings both opportunities and challenges for every major powers. So to that effect, I think China is pro probably no different. China is uh, uh, the same power which will be facing some kind of challenges and opportunities. But here we are talking about a special power, a special power that is China which is a neighboring country of Afghanistan, which is a major economic power. Um, more importantly, it is a permanent five, uh, you know, United Nations Security Council member. So mm -hmm. I think when we're talking about China's reaction to Tal Taliban or the developments in the regions, that is a special reaction. And as you rightly pointed out, there is a lot of development that has taken place in recent times. And the developments for China are not necessarily everything a, a convenient development or a positive development, but the Chinese have certainly welcomed it. And they have welcomed it, particularly for a precise reasons that this is a new development. They see it as a fresh beginning for their inroad to power in the Afghanistan. And most importantly, they have seen it as a context of the defeat of the United States of America in the regions and a new beginning for China. So to that effect, I think the statement that has come from the Chinese foreign ministry, and if we see the kind of meeting that has happened between the Taliban leaders and the Chinese uh, uh, different representative, be it from the government or be it at the party level, that's something special. And it explains that China is emerging as a new actor, a critical actor, and it will make a statement in Afghanistan regions, and it will have a critical say with the new Taliban government uh, in, in Afghanistan region. Do you see China being among the first to officially recognize the Taliban as a government? They've practically done that in their dealings and their words, but uh, do, or do you see them be more cautious? I would say that if any government in the world that is supposed to, um, you know, declare a kind of acknowledge or declare legitimacy about the Taliban government, I think it will be one of those first country and uh, People's Republic of China will be one of the first country, in fact, to raise this issue, acknowledge the Taliban government, not only uh, in the global forum, but also most importantly in the United Nations Security Council. But before that, I think what we need to really take a note of the fact that we have to wait and see, uh, and the Chinese would certainly like to wait and see what kind of government really is building up in, in Afghanistan. And I think the form of the government, the composition of the government, and the kind of chemistry that will emerge between China and Pakistan, between China, Pakistan, and Taliban, and between China and Taliban, that would be setting the pretext to the Chinese acknowledgement. So the Chinese acknowledgement will be very straight if uh, the government formation and the undertakings of the dealings between China, Pakistan, and Taliban become more convenient. 
so i would say suggest that uh, probably the chinese government will be the first p5 country in the world to legitimize the taliban government but again we we are not here to rush it because the chinese would also like to wait and watch and they would also like to wait before acknowledging the taliban and they would ensure that the new taliban government takes care of the chinese interest and falls into the chinese conditions in terms of not carrying out any illegal or any you know unintentional or any uh, intentional activities against china and i think uh, putting a condition and preparing a uh, background will be very critical to china to recognize the taliban government and they have done that specifically in their statements you know mentioning the etim or what's known as the tip now uh, and getting assurances at least verbal assurances so like you're saying everybody is waiting and watching you don't think it's uh, that simple an analysis as some have put it out that you know there's a quid pro quo here the void that you were talking about uh, the us leaving that uh, uh, and china doesn't care about human rights or what kind of a government it is it's only looking at its national interests as you're pointing out like everybody else but if its security concerns are guaranteed in terms of counter terrorism and uh, uh, from either the wakhan corridor or from anywhere else that uh, uh, terrorists could come do you see that uh, economic development which the taliban has been talking about they've even been talking about the bri and how they are willing to uh, take that forward i think as far as the economic investment and the bri is concerned or let's say china as an economic actor in the afghanistan region is concerned i think uh, they will have a very cautious approach even though at this moment we can say that china would be definitely emerging as a much greater power than its previous previous role previous avatar that we saw in la late 1990s or at the beginning of the 21st century but uh, i don't think the chinese are here to rush for the belt and road initiatives they would like to monitor the situation they would like to engage with the taliban government uh, in terms of uh, formation of the government will have a critical say in the decision making process when it comes to the regional institutions regional geopolitical uh, you know issues and then probably would like to you know evaluate the situation and then would like to probably promote the belt and road initiatives now there are three issues that needs to be mentioned when we are talking about china's approach in terms of you know future uh, promotion of the belt and road initiative one they would like to engage probably with a trilateral nexus or let's say a troika a forming a new kind of troika that would be china pakistan taliban afghanistan are uh, not necessarily china pakistan taliban but china pakistan taliban afghanistan and this is to ensure the business communities within the china and to the world community the china does not only acknowledge the taliban government but also here to build the country as a constructor as a as a, as a power which can bring you know prosperity to to taliban afghanistan and i think this has been the uh, you know problematic side of china when the the americans were talking that they are building a reconstructing the afghanistan when the world community were saying that over the last two decades they were reconstructing the afghanistan the chinese were opposing and the chinese were saying that you know the kind of rebuilding that americans and its allies are doing within afghanistan that's not a real kind of uh, uh, you know power building or economic construction or the building of afghanistan so the chinese had a problem the way the americans were approaching so the chinese would like to defer here with the rest of the construction approach so therefore uh, in order to bring a confidence level with the taliban led afghanistan government which is going to form with the peking consent is very important the second is i think the chinese would also like to have a more consultative uh, you know um, context in terms of building uh, taliban iran and uh, china together because let's not understand there has been you know chaba court um uh, in iran that has been a talking point the chinese are showing lately a lot of interest so there are regional actors let's say saudi arabia uh, there are regional actors like saudi arabia pakistan iran the chinese would like to prepare a greater regional context before really pushing the belt and road initiatives but i think the moot point here for the chinese would be to what extent the taliban led afghanistan government which will be formed in the next uh, Uh, you know few days or let's say in a couple of weeks he is going to gain a kind of confidence in peking 
and i think building the confidence will be the main gateway for china to consider the belt and road promotion in times to come but i think uh, um, the chinese at this moment will be very cautious in terms of not really rushing for the promotion of the belt and road initiatives in afghanistan uh, hapajadi you, you talked about that uh, the new troika i mean already the iron brotherhood of pakistan and china have been working on various fronts and india has had to deal with that on on many different dimensions how do you see that working because uh, pakistan right now is in uh, the mood of or at least the elements the deep state is in the mood of celebrating what a uh, victory that uh, may be a tactical victory for uh, pakistan but how do you see china and pakistan working in afghanistan with the taliban a note on pakistan's you know victory celebration i think it's quite premature even though the Chi the pakistanis would like to read it as a symbolic victory or a, a victory that was waiting uh, to come i think uh, they are also too mature and it is early to say that everything is good between pakistan and the new taliban uh, led government which will be coming in afghanistan but i think here uh, one point that is critical uh, to india and many other countries that to what extent the china pakistan chemistry will extend to taliban uh, or taliban led uh, afghanistan government and to what extent the world community will allow the china pakistan nexus to translate into afghanistan and i think the first point about china pakistan nexus translating to afghanistan i think there we need to see whether uh, the chinese would really engage with the pakistanis on the broader issues that are really uh, you know connected to afghanistan regions or to the middle east or the west asian region or it is anti india and uh, you know uh, anti india from the pakistani side and anti india from the chinese side and i think that needs to be seen to what extent this chemistry is really going to extend to uh, afghanistan the second point is that to what extent the world community is allowing the china pakistan nexus to come to uh, you know the uh, taliban afghanistan region and i think there we need to see the american position is very critical whether the americans are really you know trying to talk to the pakistanis and uh, they would be also acting so, to some extent uh, to put a pause or to put a check on the china pakistan nexus so all of these external dimensions will also be critical but def definitely i think uh, uh, what we are uh, currently seeing that there would be a troika emerging whether it is going to be a china pakistan uh, taliban troika or it is going to be a china iran taliban troika or it is a new kind of troika in eurasia uh, which will involve russia uh, china and taliban uh, troika that needs to be seen but at this moment the troika which is probably uh, looking very imminent and immediate that is china pakistan taliban troika and i think india should be careful about such a troika I just come to you for more, more in-depth analysis of India with lots of questions about the ISI chief and we saw those pictures in the Serena Hotel which he obviously wanted to be seen there so he's sending that message but uh, in terms of uh, you said whether America is dealing with Pakistan how will it deal with the Pakistan-China nexus we do know both Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of State are in Qatar not sure whether they'll be possibly meeting with the Taliban there as well but uh, you don't think that it may some analysts say that you know it may suit uh, America to see China drawn in to another quagmire in Afghanistan I mean uh, bringing China to Afghanistan is not necessarily a bad news because we need major powers presence in the country at least to take care of the government or to stay engaged with the um, you know current government of the day so to that effect the the chinese engagement with the talibanis the chinese uh, you know uh, control over the talibanis government or let's say upper hand over the Thali talibanis uh, government is not necessarily a negative uh, development but i think what from india's point of view on also from the larger geopolitical environment we need to ensure that the radical elements or the terrorist groups which were having a, a strong linkages with the Taliban, uh, uh, you know, uh, Taliban group, they need to be checked and their activities need to be checked. We should not really allow the shelter of these terrorist groups to exist uh, within the Taliban Afghanistan regions or let's say within the Pakistan regions. 
and i think there we need a greater consensus not only within un but also among the greater powers and there the role of the us will be critical role of india will be critical and a lot of other major countries in the world particularly let's say united kingdom european union uh, their voice and their role will also be critical the other factor that we need to really see that what kind of uh, approach russia really brings into the into the uh, you know scenario uh, because russia's position will be very critical we know for a fact that in the eurasian regions there has been a convenient uh, you know arrangement between russia and china the eurasian regions or let's the central asian regions uh, have been given by the russians to the chinese when it comes to the economic field the chinese have emerged as a greater economic actor in the in the central asian regions uh, and that has not really troubled the russians much but to what extent the russians will allow the chinese to have a upper hand with the talibanese government that needs to be seen so i think india needs to stay engaged india needs to really share information and also demand you know having more concrete level of informations about the groups about the you know the future government and also the india should have a regular you know um, um uh, immediate uh, talks with the major powers if something going out of hand or something is uh, not really in the interest of the regions india should really you know come out openly and try to you know uh, put a check on this with the consultation of other major powers in the region uh, you were you briefly mentioned also why pakistan should not be celebrating at, at this moment in the larger context in the strategic context what about uh, how do you see the effect of uh, blowback on pakistan itself i mean the ttp has already made its statements the other groups their international groups as well uh, we, and we've seen what's happened in the past so i think uh, as i mentioned the pakistanis have been quite premature uh, their celebrations have been quite pre premature they should not draw unnecessary conclusion because even though the world always had a problem with the taliban and particularly the way taliban was constituted in uh, you know 1990s um, but today the kind of taliban we are seeing uh, the what uh, many others have called taliban 2.0 um, are somewhat slightly different and somewhat uh, they are willing to uh, amend with the situation and they are willing to consider the international societies and international actors you know demand and uh, their requirements to some extent so to that effect i think uh, pakistan should not really draw unnecessary celebration or unnecessary positivity out of this let me give it, give you a couple of examples one is that if we see you know india's entry to central asia india was always searching for an alternative uh, entry to central asia and that was via you know iran and afghanistan and uh, you know last two decades india has invested a lot and the whole approach was to bypass china whole approach was to bypass pakistan and find an alternative way and if india will stay continued engaged with the new taliban government along with the major actors in the regions let's say us uk european union so the same you know alternative way of reaching out to central asia or to the uh, eastern europe is not a difficult uh, you know terrain altogether even though previously india had reservation with the taliban government like many other countries but uh, you know we can find a way to stay engaged with the talibanis so the pakistanis should not really unnecessarily draw this positive conclusion the second thing is that i think the pakistani establishment will be under severe watch let's say that uh, you know even though we know for a fact that the americans are have withdrawn from the regions they have not necessarily cut down the linkages from the regions they are very much well connected with the regions they have uh, you know security investment in the regions there are uh, you know intelligence surveillance setups all around afghanistan and they are very much connected with the taliban regions in some ways so we should i, I think uh, the pakistanis conclusion that the americans have withdrawn and it is a all rosy picture for china, for pakistan and china to make an inroad to taliban i think it's a it's a unnecessarily and uh, uh, immature conclusion at this moment uh, one of our regular uh, viewers uh, matara has a question uh, in terms of the equipment military equipment that the americans have left behind we seeing these one of the last uh, few flights that took off with the american soldiers whether it's for terrorist groups or whether there is some kind of technology that say china or iran or some other country who, uh, 
could gain from whether reverse engineering or using that equipment. Uh, your thoughts on that, Professor? I think we should not be worried about that. As uh, the statement came from the different uh, American officials, um, uh, that uh, the equipments, the military equipments, so whatever is there left over, they have been demilitarized. So that's not entirely a major concern. But to me, I think if I try to understand from a uh, greater power calculus, for me, the concern is uh, whether the same military equipments will go to the Chinese hand and to the Russian hand. Because let's not forget, if American uh, have demilitarized the weapons, that not necessarily mean that those military hardware or military infrastructure cannot be reused in another battle tank or in another gun or in another equipment. I think what we need to ensure that whether the Chinese and the Russians are really coming to the help and try to remanufacture those military equipments. If we can ensure that, because I think there is a um, uh, you know demand about uh, being fair, being responsible to the world community, and I think China and Russia, being the United Nations Security Council's permanent member, the onus is on them. The other challenge is that I think what we need to see whether uh, to what extent the Chinese and Russians will empower in terms of providing security and further military infrastructure to the new Taliban government. We know for a fact, as you mentioned earlier, um, Amitav, in your program, that the Chinese were actually very well connected with the Talibanese in 1996 to 2001 in their earlier avatar. If we try to revisit that period, that was the period actually when the Chinese actually were helping uh, you know, the jihadist groups uh, in the 90s. Uh, the jihadist groups in Afghanistan uh, in terms of, you know, trying to have uh, the military equipments uh, to fight the, you know, the Soviet troops. So I think um, the Chinese have done it previously. Um, uh, but uh, one good thing the Chinese did that time in 1996, uh, when the Taliban group came to power, the Chinese stayed in contact with the Taliban, but they didn't really recognize the Taliban government. So it would be interesting to see this time to what extent they they would really you know engage with the Talibanis, and to what extent after recognizing, which is very much anticipated, because if uh, if the Taliban government is uh, you know taking care of the Chinese interest and the Pakistani interest, then probably the Chinese will be the first power, UN power, uh, to acknowledge the Taliban government. And if that th acknowledgement is uh, you know um, coming up, then the Chinese would definitely like to have a much more stable and stronger. Um, not only economic ties, but also security and military ties with the Taiwan. So it would be interesting to see whether they would be really trying to help the Taliban government to revamp and, uh, you know, militarize again those defunct militaries left over that the Americans have left, or to what extent they can. And also here, interestingly, for your viewers, I would like to draw another, uh, you know, uh, instance here. Let's look at the case of North Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, how the North Koreans have been uh, uh, become a, you know, a nuclear power. There has been a big hand by the Chinese when the North Korean uh, became the nuclear powers. In fact, there has been a hand by the Russians, uh, North Korea becoming the nuclear powers. But today, probably the Chinese are uh, to some extent repeating that, you know, they are regretting to some extent that the North Koreans have, uh, you know, become a nuclear power. Uh, they don't have much choice. They have to manage a nuclear North Korea. But yes, the Chinese had a big hand. Um, um, you know, with regard to the North Koreans uh, becoming the nuclear power. So similarly, we have to see to what extent the Chinese are engaging with the Taliban and helping them. So to that effect, it would be interesting to see how they are going to reuse the military leftovers uh, uh, in terms of revitalizing them for the Taliban uh, future government. You mentioned Russia and China. Dr. Banda, there's a, a question, in fact, on why the Russian NSA or the security secretary is in India. He's going to meet uh, Ajit Doval uh, and other officials, including possibly the prime minister. Uh, Russia is worried about Chinese uh, presence and increasing, uh, you know, support in Central Asia, which is its backyard as well. Uh, the SCO, which we do believe the prime minister will uh, attend the summit possibly only virtually though. What is 
India's uh, what should India be doing in the SEO because it has China, Russia, uh, it has Pakistan as well, and uh, Afghanistan. Do you see the Chinese trying to get into the SEO? That is the I think, I think as far as the SEO is concerned, uh, we need to understand that it is a body primarily dominated by the Chinese and to some extent probably the Russians. So Ross, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization has always been a um, organization or a multilateral institutions where a power sharing agreement uh, have been witnessed between China and Russia. But when it comes to the Taliban issue right now, and I think uh, we are going to see a new kind of power calculus within the issue. One, we are going to see a probably a divide between China and Russia to some extent, uh, even though not every time, but on critical issues, there might be a divide between China and Russia because, uh, you know, um, uh, let's not forget one thing. There has always been a class of interest uh, when it comes to Central Asia, the broader US and regions. And the Chinese are actually trying to bring Afghanistan to their ambit of the Eurasian, uh, uh, you know, holder for a long time. In fact, 2011, uh, you know, during the, uh, you know, um, uh, the Sanya BRICS conference, um, uh, Afghanistan was consulted. In fact, Afghanistan was drawn to SEO as an observer member in 2011 sometimes. And the Chinese have, you know, engaged with the Afghanistan government for a long time as far as SEO is concerned. So today it would be interesting to see to what, what extent the Chinese are actually showing an interest to bring the Taliban government uh, within a closer proximity of the SEO umbrella. And to what extent the Russians are reacting or really Russians are agreeing to this, uh, you know, the Chinese uh, eagerness to bring the Taliban uh, government within the SEO area. So I think uh, as far as my reading goes at this moment, I don't think there has been any substantial talk between China and uh, uh, Russia. And I think that is a plus point for India. In India needs to you know, engage more and more with Russia at this moment. We need to build a confidence with Russia. We need to you know, be with Russia more than the Chinese on, as far as the SEO is concerned. And as far as we are with the Russian government, and I think we will find a kind of a parity of interest in terms of you know, raising uh, objection on the critical issues, be it on the connectivity issues, be it on the terrorist groups or on the extremist groups. I think Russia has been a big supporter to India in multilateral forums to some extent. And we should not really miss the opportunity of, uh, you know, strengthening the ties with Russia as far as uh, SEO is concerned. Within SEO, we need to promote a greater chemistry between, uh, between India and Russia. And I think uh, that's what we need to prioritize at this moment as far as the issue is concerned. Again, uh, last uh, question, let me go back to India and your worries in terms of uh, the Taliban government. There have been many voices, there have been statements in the past as well, which have delinked Kashmir from the then peace process. That was a so-called peace process, I mean, the withdrawal process actually, between the US and the Taliban. Uh, how worrying is, uh, um, you know, terrorism sh shifting back towards uh, Kashmir for India and what should we be doing? It's a big, uh, it's a big development and uh, probably um, there will be more challenges uh, coming for India. Um, you mentioned about terrorism. Yes, that's a radical truth because we do not know uh, who are the parts of the new Taliban government that is going to be, you know, taking the reign in uh, Afghanistan uh, in near future and how what are their connections with the yeah, with the you know radical groups al qaeda groups isis so we don't know and also what we need to also be worried as i mentioned about the troika uh, china pakistan and uh, you know the taliban troika and i think that will definitely give some kind of a confidence to the radical groups but i think uh, also i will mention for india the problems will arrive on a different scale and there are two specific specific problems that we should not really miss out. One is the Troika, um, you know, uh, complicating the boundary dispute, let's say between China and India boundary dispute. And I think what we know for a fact that uh, probably the radical groups um, within the Taliban, they had they, they had an in, anti-India posture always. But if they will have a supporting 
base or supporting stance towards china on the boundary issue that will be a critical development because radical groups or taliban government taking a supportive towards uh, supportive stance towards china on the china india boundary dispute that will really complicate the situation i think we should be really vigilant about that the second issue which would be probably a new development um uh, uh, as we know that the taliban so far has been a much more islamist uh, you know religious centric uh, you know extremist group um so they are taking a position on the territorial issues or on the boundary issues will definitely be a new development but the more uh, key development here would be that whether we are managing to get the control over the kashmir issue properly or not so therefore i think i would support the stand of the current government in delhi the kind of step we have taken in uh, you know in in recent past about jammu and kashmir in terms of securitizing the regions and trying to have a direct um, you know s- um, a link with the central government and try to strengthen the security system there that will be the most immediate need of the year hour but again i think that is another regions that the kashmir problem might really mounting up at some point and we so far probably we were anticipating a dual front problem that was china pakistan nexus problem towards india but we might in future might uh, see a three trial uh, problem or a troika kind of a problem that is a china pakistan uh, you know taliban problems on jammu and kashmir or on territorial issues and we should be really preparing hard to uh, meet these challenges absolutely uh, uh, dr jagannath and uh, very valid point raised by matara about the duplicity of uh, various players here including the taliban who have not said anything about uh, the uigur issue if they are claiming to be uh, islamic representative group but uh, dr pan i will leave that for another time do appreciate your time and your expertise thank you for appearing on strat news global thank you amitav it's a pleasure to be in your program thank you pleasure was all ours and the pleasure was also for all our viewers who came in live and uh, were commenting or raising questions some of which we couldn't really put to our uh, guest but we'll continue to do that in a in a subsequent uh, programs thank you all for watching live and participating and thank you all for those who will watch this streaming later on our youtube channel if you haven't so far do subscribe to our youtube channel and follow us on our social media uh, handles on twitter facebook and instagram this is the gist on strat news global i'm amitabh revi